Lie is the relation of the long axis of the fetus to the long axis of the maternal spine. Most commonly, it is a longitudinal line. However, it may be transverse or oblique. Presentation is the part of the fetus which occupies the lower pole of the uterus. Most commonly, it is a cephalic presentation. In 3% of term pregnancies, the presentation is breech. In 0.5% of pregnancies, the presentation is shoulder and others. An example of other is compound presentation. When a hand is felt beside the presenting head, the presenting part is the part of the presentation which overlies the internal os. In cephalic presentation, for example, in a well flexed and slightly deflexed head, the presenting part is vertex. In extended head, the presenting part is brow. In fully extended head, the presenting part is face. Attitude is the relation of different parts of the fetus to one another. Flexion is the universal attitude. All body joints are flexed to maintain an ovoid shape that correspond with the shape of the uterine ovoid. However, exceptions may occur, such as extension of head in cephalic presentation or extension of legs in breech presentation. Denominator is a fixed bony point on the presenting part. Now I will write the presenting part on the left side and its denominator on the right side. In vertex presentation, occiput is the denominator. In face presentation, it is mentum. In brow presentation, it is frontal eminence. In breach presentation, the denominator is sacrum. While in shoulder presentation, the denominator is acromion. Position is the relation of the denominator to different compartments of maternal pelvis. There are eight positions, three anterior, three posterior, and two transverse. Let's take vertex presentation with its denominator, the occiput, as an example. Here you see the occiput directed anteriorly and to the left, and that's why it's called left occipital anterior position. On the other side, it become right occipital anterior. And when the occiput is directly behind the symphysis pubis, it's called direct occipital anterior. These are the three anterior positions. Now let's move to the posterior compartment. We have right occipital posterior, left occipital posterior and when the occiput is directly anterior to the sacrum it's called direct occipital posterior and finally there are two transverse positions left occipital transverse and right occipital transverse 